because inbound is the C-17 Globemaster III representing the United States Air Force from Dover Air Force Base. Craft weight, capable of carrying up to 170,000 pounds of cargo. Amazing. Taking off right now, the Geico Skytypers in their North American SNJ-2 training aircraft. up there in the cockpit taking care of everything and uh, as we get the Geico Sky Typers out of the area we'll be turning the uh, C-17 inbound. Now the C-5 Galaxy for years Andy was the biggest airplane in the world until the Russians decided they want something a little bit bigger right? That's, that's correct. But the fact of the matter is as big as the C-5 Galaxy is uh, the, the C-17 even though it's smaller has about 80% of the load carrying capability and is, has established an incredibly high mission readiness record. That's correct. Uh, at latest count, it's about 96% wow. mission reliability, which is uh, uh, indicative of how easy this aircraft is to maintain. Uh, a lot of components are interchangeable, so they're able to quickly switch in, in and out components, making it extremely reliable. Yeah, when you look at the tires on this thing, it's even got a way to change tires quickly, right? Correct. They can uh, actually lift just one of the main bogies, change the tire, and then drop that bogey back down, supported by the uh, forward or aft main bogey. So here from the left, uh, coming in. Right now he's at 500 feet AGL. He's accelerating to 300 knots. This is demonstrating the low level capability and high speed tactics that we would have coming in. As he passes the show center, please notice how quiet this aircraft is, providing the ability for a tactical surprise and it's environmentally friendly. You know what? Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the C-17, as he pulls up here, provides that direct lift capability for wow. intercontinental cargo. Wow. It can routinely land, as I said, on 3,500 feet of runway. It has four Pratt & Whitney, engi Whitney engines, each engine providing 40,000 pounds of thrust. So I'll do the math, that's 160,000 pounds of total thrust. And it's got a huge wing area, about 3,800 square feet, and that really makes it extremely good at slow speeds, like we're gonna see next. Correct, next he's uh, throwing out the slats and flaps, providing for, uh, readying himself for a slow speed pass. As you mentioned, the large wing capacity, to put it in perspective, it's about half the length of a football field. Yeah, that wingspan is 169 feet, 10 inches. And and look at the, ladies and gentlemen, on the edges of the wings, they have those winglets. And they actually, even though they stick up and it's something else in the air, they actually reduce drag and increase efficiency. Correct. It uh, provides more lift capability but reducing the wingspan so we can put it into tighter airfields. And also to put it into perspective, those little winglets are over nine feet tall. So if you put a hoop on them, you'd almost be ready regulation NBA. <laughs> okay. Now as it comes in, look at the aircraft. It looks huge. It is so cavernous, but yet only three crew members are necessary to operate the airplane. Correct. Two pilots and one loadmaster. It's about half the crew of a normal aircraft that size. So with the slats and flaps extended, right now he is doing about 120 miles per hour. Those flaps are actually in the line of the jet thrust, providing vectored lift. And that gives the ability to land in the shorter field and gives it that slow speed capability. I wondered how that works. Now as he passes show center, he's going to add power. Now he's about 20 degrees nose high before pushing over for the next teardrop pass. And that shows the go-around capability that the aircraft's capable of. 
climbing out at the steep angles, gets it out of the low arms threat environment very quickly while over the safe confines of the airfield. And what was so amazing to me is that it was relatively quiet. Correct. Now, as it goes by, one of the things I saw when it was going over to the right to teardrop in for that slow speed pass, he had it banked up probably 60 degrees of bank. That's unheard of in a cargo aircraft. Correct. With the mission computer, it's able to provide a safe stall margin. You're allowed to, as long as the airspeed's there, as long as you have the correct configuration, the computer will tell you well before you ever approach a stall. It's an amazing capability. It so has, now, oh, go ahead. As he, uh, as he starts to turn inbound here, he's going to again start a 360-degree uh, turn over show center. He's not going to be at the high speed this time, but still in a clean configuration, showing the maneuverability of the aircraft. Again, trying to stay over the safe environment of the airfield, avoiding the tactical threat. Maximum speed, what, a little over 500 miles an hour? At cruise, yes. 500, 550 miles per hour is pretty routine. And as we listen to these engines, I was talking about how quiet they are. If you've ever been on a jetliner like a Boeing 757 specifically, they have the civilian version of the same engine that powers the C-17. It is the exact same engine on the 757. So notice the tight turn radius. Again, providing that tactical lift capability. And Andy, you fly these things, right? That's correct. Now, I know that a C-130 has like a yoke, a sl almost a steering wheel. The C-5 has a steering wheel. But you don't have a steering wheel, do you? Correct. It is a stick using the exact same grips as any type of fighter. And it's actually very friendly for the pilots to use because that's what we're trained in in basic pilot training. And it uses a quadruple redundant fly-by-wire system. So like the F-16, there are no mechanical linkage between the flight controls, the throttles, and the stick. So like the F-16 Fighting Falcon that we saw fly earlier today, it's an electric jet. That's correct. All the flight controls are hydraulic, run by four separate hydraulic systems. Again, providing that quadruple redundant system. And the now other... Cap Rank is going to go ahead and pull up here as he or, uh, starts to maneuver for an assault landing. Holy cow! Now when you come in on a landing on a normal jet airliner, your flight path is about three degrees. He's gonna nearly double that, coming in at about five degrees. And that provides that tactical assault capability to provide an exact pinpoint landing. If we're gonna land in a short field, we have to make sure we touch down in the exact spot we want. So the pilot, as he turns his final turn here, is going to use that heads-up display with the flight path vector to put that spot exactly where he wants the main wheels to touch down. You know, did you talk about the heads-up display? That is something that is unique to fighters or has been unique to fighter aircraft. This is one of the first airplanes of this size ever to have a heads-up display. That's correct. The idea is that we can use that heads-up display to make sure that we're looking outside using those two glass panes to give us all the vital information we need to fly the aircraft. Airspeed, attitude. So right now he's on a f steep five degree glide slope. He's putting that flight path vector exactly where he wants the main wheels to touch down. It really is a phenomenal thing. Now, I want you to watch, ladies and gentlemen, when it touches down. They're going to use the engines to help stop it once it touches down. If you look at the engine casings, or nacelles, as they are called, once it touches down, the pilot will do go into what is called reverse thrust, vectoring the thrust of the jet engine forward to help slow it down. You'll see panels open up on the side of each of the nacelles that will throw that jet thrust forward to help it slow down. Down. Look at that, five degrees down. Watch for the and touchdown. And now watch for the short field landing capability of the C-17. Full anti-skid brakes, full thrust reversers. And this is and about it's going to come to a stop. And those thrust wow. reversals will maintain that reverse thrust as Captain Reich will now back the aircraft. This is another unique capability that we can routinely back the aircraft under its own power. Wow. So he'll continue to use that reverse thrust to take, uh, to continue to back to where he wants to start his takeoff run. 
So they don't need to turn it around, although if you want to turn around, you've got a very, very tight turning radius on